Well, on trying to decide where to catch the eclipse, of course you need to know where it's going to be. I've used Xavier Jubier's wonderful website for this. Uh, I think every eclipse enthusiast has already found this uh, site. I just want to show it anyway. Uh, it's an interactive Google map, and it shows the uh, path of the eclipse. It has some extra functionality as well, like time zone display and elevation of the terrain. Um, most important is that you can zoom in using your mouse anywhere on the map. So it shows the path of the eclipse and between the two red lines is the path of totally. So you have 100% obscuration there and this is basically where you'd want to be. Uh, you can click on any point in the map and it will give you certain information like your location and also uh, when the eclipse starts, uh, when the maximum eclipse is going to be, when the end is. Uh, it gives the time, it's in universal time, so make sure that you uh, correct the time for your time zone or at least the time zone you're going to be in. Uh, very, very good information to have, uh, to know, uh, especially at the time. And you can click anywhere on the map and uh, it will give the uh, location and uh, all the information you'd need to decide on where you want to be on the day of the eclipse. So this is an animation from the NASA website and it shows a view of the United States during the total solar eclipse in August. Uh, it shows a path of the totally in red and also the sun as it appears in various locations. starting from Amsterdam in the Netherlands and flying to Los Angeles, uh, California, and that's going to be our starting point. Um, obviously you can't see the eclipse here. Um, our mode of transport will be by car, so we have to check the path of the eclipse and see what's doable by car. Um, that would be uh, in the path the area of Oregon, Idaho, and all the way to Wyoming, though the outer edge of Wyoming probably is too far for doing by car. So this inner area is where we can set up our base camp and then for depending on the weather forecast for the coming days we can decide where we're going to watch the eclipse. So this is the boundaries, the inner area, and the exact spot where we're going to be depends on the weather statistics. So the best place to be is uh, obviously the place where there's the least chance of cloudy weather and to know that you need to know the weather statistics from the past 10 to 15 years. Uh, you can look all that up yourself, but there are also some, some guys who have done this for us, and I happily make use of their websites. Uh, one of them is this website from Jay Anderson, and uh, an excellent website that gives lots of information, lots of statistical data uh, on the states where the path uh, is. You see them here. Uh, first of all, it gives an overview, and uh, you can look through that. Lots of data. And then you can look you know, per state, like Idaho, which is the one we're looking at, uh, to see the specific uh, state data there. So he shows, uh, and also suggestions uh, about what the best place in that state would be to watch the eclipse. Um, also from Jay Anderson's site is this uh, average August uh, cloud uh, amount. And he shows for two times, for 10.30, which is the time of the eclipse, and for 1.30. And based on this, you can also make your choice. And this is from the past 10 to 12 years. And then another uh, from Jay's uh, site is this one. Average clouds along the center line of the total solar eclipse. Uh, prediction, of course. Uh, which also helps in narrowing down the choice of where you'd like to be. Another site is from Kevin Gullickson, an astronomer. Um, he's done it the way I would actually have done it. 
and I'm happy that he did it so I don't have to do the work. <laughs> so what he did was he uh, got the historical uh, cloud cover data from the global data assimilation system, the archives, and he pulled all that together and he made a compilation of all the data. And he put that down in a website for us to use. Where should I watch the eclipse? And then he has two maps, map of clear sky and map of cloudy skies. And you can zoom in if you'd like, it's an interactive map. Uh, and it shows the clear rate and the uh, cloudy rate. And uh, this also helps in narrowing down your choice. Another site is from the NOAA with the cloud statistics. Also a site you can use. At least I did that. Uh, it also has some interactive maps with the average historical cloudiness for August uh, 21st. Uh, this map, uh, we could check that out later on a different site. And then there's also some other information here. So this last site is an interactive map. And um, it shows the historical data from the various weather stations along the path of the eclipse. And um, so you can zoom in on this one as well, just using your mouse. Uh, it shows all the, all the dots are the weather stations. And the wider the dot, uh, the better the viewing will be and the le less chance of clouds. So you can click on a dot and it will give you the information. The eclipse time, obscuration, and then the sky conditions. And this also helps a lot in deciding where you need to be. So based on all this, we decided on Idaho, uh, where we're going to watch the eclipse, It'll give us the best chance of clear skies. Uh, Ogden in Utah will be our base camp, and then depending on the weather forecast, uh, we can choose these areas to watch the eclipse. <laughs>